Hey, it's Karen from Lion Gate Farm, and today I am going to teach you how to make this little tiny goat. Pretty easy. It's pretty fun. So join me. Come on over and make sure to click like and follow us. Okay, so today we're going to make this little goatee. I know we've been promising this to you for a little while, but things have, you know, come up, been busy, and it's a little armature goatee. My basic armature, I'm going to teach you how to make these horns. Um, this is the best thing. I love making these little horns. So let me show you how we're going to do this. He's pretty small compared to some of the stuff I make. He is only about five and a half by four and a half. Um, I do, I only use power wax. That's why I don't have cannon. I'll get it in a minute. I only use power wax on his horns. Um, you can do the feet if you want. So let's get going. Um, there will be, when Canon uploads the video, I'll post this in the comments so that you can get it. So you guys will know where to get it. So the first thing we're going to do is build the little body. You're going to need a six and a half inch 16 gauge wire for the body. And I mean, it's pretty easy. So you're going to bend over about an inch. You just bend over about an inch and up and down and then curve it in. Curve it in just a little bit. So basically this is just to hold the goat in place. That's what that's for. And we're gonna just build that little body on there. It's pretty quick little felt, I think, comparatively. The one we do next will take a long time. So you're gonna need core wool of course. And then the colors you're going to use on your goat. Today I'm going to use this brown and raven for his accents. And then I have some snow, which is the best white there ever is. And then I have some just little bits of, of darker colors, some fog color for its horns. And then um, I think this is jackrabbit, just, just for contrast colors. Um, to use in there. So 16 gauge wire, a six and a half inch piece for the body. You need two five inch, two six inch, sorry, two six inch pieces for the legs. And then a five and a half inch piece of 18 gauge for the horns. You can probably go smaller on the horns, but I don't like to. So we are just going to wrap the head first. Goats have a triangular head. Triangle, almost everything we make, I swear, has a triangle head. They're flat under here, flat on the nose, okay? So we're just gonna take our wool and wrap it down to the nose, come back up. I want you to make a little figure eight. Whoops. Does that make sense? Over the head. Come back around. And we're going to work this head first. And let's tack this in. You can see I'm getting a triangle already. It's been crazy around here. Spring weather has come, plants came in, been planting. My friend Carolyn's bringing me stuff she's digging out of her garden, been planting those. I was actually kind of glad it rained. It kind of gave me a day off, kind of, kind of, been working hard. April showers bring May flowers. Yeah. True. I have about 1,500. Okay. I had a hundred percent germination rate on my seeds. So I have like 1,500 babies going on in the greenhouse. My tomatoes are at like 200% germination because they're always slow for me when I put them in to plant them. This year, they were not. I have a million tomato plants. I might have to make Cannon grow a tomato. I tried, um, last year I got this weird, I probably brought it in because I bought some plants. I got this weird fungus. And 
I'm going to have to use this stuff in my soil when I actually put them out. But I made sure that when I ordered my seeds, I ordered extremely disease resistant seeds. Who knew there was such a thing? So when you're buying tomatoes, look for disease resistant ones. So you can see I'm making the triangle this way and this way. And then this end is flat. I have my wire right there and I'm gonna need to wrap a little bit more. <clears throat> Today, I have been stuck behind my desk doing taxes, you know, procrastinator extraordinaire here. And John, my husband, very smartly has not bothered me at all. <laughs> because he'll know I'll say, hey, can you help me? And he won't. always take the easy way out and file an extension but you know what I just gotta get it done 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 so you want this head kind of firm because you're gonna sculpt it in a bit so now I got the head pretty much the right size I'm gonna just wrap down the body now Goats, like sheep, have a rumen. That's why a lot of times when you see goats, they look fat. More than a sheep would look fat. They look fat. Or pregnant. A lot of people think goats are pregnant all the time. It's just their big old rumen from eating lots of hay. Now, I made this bend in here. But they don't have a lot. You don't want a lot of neck. So we're going to just build up on this wire. And I'm comparing it to the one that I have done, but I have it outlined on my cheat sheet. And then we're going to wrap this more. You know, I wish I could tell you exactly how many wraps, but you know what? I just go. I go till it's done. And I know a lot of you guys do too. But let's make a belly. Right now it kind of looks like a snake, doesn't it? And I'm going to give you some measurements. So the body is about two inches deep at the belly, but right at the leg, it's only about one and a half inches deep. And the body ends up being about four inches. So we do need a chest. Oh, so let's wrap a little bit here. After you've been felting for a while, you're gonna realize that almost everything has the same shape. It's really, re it, you know, when you're doing animals, like anything that has four legs almost always has the same basic body shape. Sometimes I feel like I'm being a little redundant teaching these things over and over. <laughs> Cause they all have the same shape. It's just how you make the head. You know, put the legs on, a little bit different. Uh, of course, remember, the tighter you wrap, the less you have to poke. So his head, I know, is looking a little small, but don't worry about that because we're gonna add more with the brown. I think a common mistake that people make a lot 
is when you're working with the core wool, you make it and it looks great because you've got it all to the right size. And then when you add the top coat or the top color, it gets too big. And that's because you're, you gotta add just a little bit less. So you want that back kind of nice and flat. You know, if the goat's super fat, they'll have a sway back, but you don't want them to have a sway back. Well, maybe you do. So as I work through this, I'm like, okay, so this goat is going to need a hind end, a behind. Uh-oh, there's a little bit of glitter left over from doing the hippo, which we're going to do next. So we know that she's going, this goat is going to have a little hind end. Let's compare her length, his length getting close. So now I think I want to add the legs and you know how we do that. We're going to take our two six inch wires and your little skewer, my magic trick. So goats have a chest in front of their leg. So kind of where the neck is the back of the neck, you're going to come up about this far. You know, my lovely little trick here, follow that wire, follow that skewer through. You know, look at pictures of goats. We're doing brown ones, but they come in a million colors. I was thinking about doing a black and white one, but I didn't think um, we'd get enough contrast on camera to do a black goat face for you. But you could do a black one with little white accents. Following my skewer through for the black legs. The back, the black legs, the back legs. <laughs> we should say how many, how many things can you hear me say wrong? So there, you've got little goat legs. And then just like we do on the other videos, we're going to stab this little piece on here. We're going to build up that little haunch. And if you notice, I'm not going to wrap the leg yet. We got it on this side, poke it in. We're going to get on this side. We're going to just wrap those legs, kind of get them stuck where they belong for right now. I need something new to binge watch, you guys. You guys gotta tell me your favorite binge-worthy show. Because sometimes when I'm felting, I turn on Netflix. It doesn't have to be Netflix. It could be Hulu, or it could be Disney, or it could be anything. I don't really watch I think I was watching um, Unexplained about this haunted house, Tales of the Unexplained. I don't know, sometimes I just let it play and I end up watching some really interesting foreign films. <laughs> Where it's a good thing I'm not watching because the words don't match the mouth. So you see how I wrapped it around, made his leg. You can see he's starting to get a belly there just by doing that. Yeah. Cannon doesn't watch TV or movies. So when he's my age, because you know he's just a youngster, when he's my age, he's gonna have lots of stuff to watch. <laughs> I'm 
and my husband, he just watches sci-fi. Tons and tons of sci-fi and Star Trek. And I think he's seen every Star Trek like 900 times. So maybe that's why I got into felting, so I didn't have to pay attention to the TV. The only thing I wish I could do is felt while, I'm, while someone's driving the car. I can't do that, though. I can't even look in the glove box. I get sick. If I could felt in the car, it would be awesome. I've got three legs on there. This other one built up over here. Don't see how this kind of caves in right here? I want that to stick out a little bit more, but I want to let's get this one done. Wrapping around that leg just a little. I'm just trying to build up his little shoulder. I took Rip out in the pasture, so you guys want a Rip update on his herding. This is hilarious. I was I was messing around treating the pond with some pellets and stuff, and I wasn't paying attention to the dog. Remember, Rip went to herding school. I turn around. He has all 46 sheep in a little bunch, and he's looking at me like, so what do I do with them, Mom? <laughs> it's like, oh, no. <laughs> because, you know, we haven't got to go back to class because it's been raining and whatnot. So I really don't know the next step yet, but he thought he did. <laughs> he was having a good old time out there. Yeah, it's pretty funny. And then he got the zoomies and he went around our big quarter acre pond like 25 times. Of course, splashing through the irrigation stream, which is just mud right now. So we had to have a bath because he was not a red dog anymore. He was a black dog. And then because it's tick season, we got to pull a million ticks off of him. Silly dog. He's just so proud of himself for putting all the sheep in a bunch. And the guardian dog, Amira, who, who could care less if Rip is out there, is just looking at him like, I don't know what he's doing. <laughs> so you can see I'm starting to sculpt the little body into the shape I want. So we have like little haunches here. I know you guys like that I do these in real time. So I'm trying to give you. So if we... this one might be a little bit short, but it's going to be fine. And don't worry if these back legs look longer than the front legs. You do want to make sure, you know, that your wires are pretty even. We're going to put some feet on right now. Actually, no, I think we're going to do the head first. I'm going to change it up. Let's do the head first. I'm just getting them nice and firm. I saw somebody was on one of the felting groups was asking about how to get their, their creation smoother. And someone gave them some very good advice. And it's something I try to tell you. The smoother you get your core wool underneath, the smoother your top coat's going to look, even if it's not super felted. So see how this is loose right here? We're going to get that a little bit tighter. I didn't know how fast this was going to go, so I had one made up already, and I can show you. See how smooth I have this core wool under here? That's how you want it to look before you put the top coat on. So see, I'm a little bit loose right here. 
I mean, you can put the top coat on. It's just going to be a lot more work to get it to look nice. You know, everybody wants to go fast, 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 fast. But the more time you take with your attention to detail, remember the devil's in the details, the better your piece will look at the end. I can just tell you guys funny stories while I'm sitting here doing this. If you want. So I think you guys all know my mom passed away in January. And one of the things my mom hated was when my dad would cut down trees. Or even when he would just trim trees. She would just get all bent out of shape. <laughs> and this last week, oh my gosh, my mom would be so mad. <laughs> My dad had two of her favorite trees <laughs> totally trimmed. I mean, they're naked. And my sister and I are like, Dad? Mom would be so mad. He goes, I know, I know. I was thinking it the whole time. <laughs> but that's what he wanted to do. You know, he's keeping busy, so that's good. But it's like, oh my gosh. And then I rescued some of her plants because someone keeps forgetting to water them. All right, so now I just added a little chest to there. All right, let's work on that head. So the first color we're gonna use is this brown. And I think this is sienna, I think. I think, I think, I think. And I just am gonna start at the neck, kind of like how we built the head. Wrap it around, just wrap it around. Wrap it smooth. That's the less felting for you. Less felting you'll have to do if you wrap it nice and smooth. I'm using the 38 star spiral, which is my favorite. Ah. You could use a 38 star, a 38 triangle, but the, the star spiral, it's a workhorse. So I don't know if you know about spiral needles. So a 38 star used to be my favorite until they came out with this one. So a star has five working sides. And when they spiral them, which means adding a twist, um, it takes those working, the working um, barbs and it offsets them, which makes the needle work twice as hard. And so it takes your favorite needle, the 38 star, and turns it into a major workhorse. And you can see how fast it, it gets this felted in. It also helps that I'm using Sliver and not Merino. Sliver, well, you can I guess you could have Merino Sliver. But I'm using a Corydale Sliver, which is a coarser wool. And it's got more scales. That's what makes wool coarse, how much scales is on the, the shaft. Because that's what you want to combine with. Your needle hits those scales. All right, so now we want to get this little nose done. I keep working the bottom because I want it nice and flat. I want it nice and flat. Out here. So we have little cheekies here. And we're kind of flat right here. The faces aren't super fat. There's a lot of sheep that look like goats and a lot of goats that look like sheep. Again, look at pictures, see what color you wanna do.
I'm going to take just a tiny bit of white and poke it onto the end here. So okay if it goes up the center. Rip's chewing on something under the table. He has a dead duck down there, like a play duck. It's pretty dead. Carolyn brought over her German short hair puppy. It's a little bit younger than Rip. And they played and played and played and played and Rip slept like a rock. Okay, so we have a little, that's where his nose is going to be. I'm just putting that there so I know where I'm going, okay? I want to know where I'm going. So we're trying to get that triangle. My wire is a little close to the end. I may have to add some more. Maybe not. Now, goat nose. I'm just going to make, they kind of look like hearts when you look at them in the real world. Now, I have a little piece of this tan color. And I am, it's just a light tan. I'm going to just blend it into the nose and go up the face, kind of in a small triangle. Because that's going to help us here. And I have another one. I'm just going to go over my white. So basically I'm building some depth in my colors. I may add some more white on here. I have some Raven, so let's make a little nose. Let's make a little heart-shaped nose. Just take a little bit. Let's find that center. Poke that back in. You have to take your time with this face. See, I'm using hardly any fibers at all. Don't make these lines too thick because then it will just not look good. And if you want to know the truth, when I made that first goat, I had to cut his face off. Well, I had to cut <laughs> I had to cut his chin off. It was just like, nope, this does not look like a goat. So I took my scissors to it and cut it off. So, I, you know, I like them to smile, so I'm going to make it smile right there. I made it, and then I'm like, oh, no, this is not good. And you know, I work with my, I work holding it in my hand because I can't bend my head down to see the felting pad. And there we're getting this little, this little face on. I know, and I don't normally have you put this part on before the eyeballs, but we're going to, so we can get good eyeball placement. So, there we go. 
out, we know one eye is going to go right there. So follow the corner of your nose up and one eye is going to go right here. And the other eye is going to go obviously on the other side. But follow the corner of that nose up. So we know where those eyes are going to go, right? But we're not going to put them in yet. Because first... Yeah, maybe we will put them in. So see, I have a little bit of core wool poking through there. Let's add a little bit. Sometimes it takes more than you think to cover core wool. And those of you that have sheep and goats that are felting these, yeah, that original one I made, I'm like, oh my gosh, she's got bottle jaw. Like he has worms. So I cut it off. I wish I could just do that with my sheep. All right, so let's make a little round bowl. A lot of times I will just use a piece of fiber for the second eye so I can look at them together and make sure they're going to be the same size. Don't want to go with a concussion. All right, got some little eyes there. I've got this little darker, interesting color. I go in my scrap box a lot. And I'm sure you're all getting a scrap box. And I'm just poking a little flat piece. You know what I'm doing. I'm going to make this his eyebrow. This guy's going to have dark eyebrows. Now I want this to go down his nose. I'm making him a little bit different than the first one. I don't know if I like that yet. Let's make another one. Oh, not black. This color. You could use just a lighter contrasting brown. Cannon hurt his back and he's over here moaning. Go ask John for some ibuprofen. He'll give you some. Right now he looks kind of funny. Looks like he has Groucho Marx eyebrows. That's okay. Let's just let's put in. I have a little bit of gray here. And I'm going to run this down the sides of his nose and up there towards his horns because his horns are going to be this gray this fog color you can see everything's still a little bit fuzzy because I haven't got it where I want it yet I want to put a little shading in here for his nose. I'm really missing not having any lambs this year. See everybody's lambs out there in social media land. And I'm like, I wish I had lambs. But I have too many sheep. Must reduce the numbers of sheep I have before I have more, more sheep. I made my husband a promise. 
It's probably a good one. Okay, so let's put that horn wire in. So you got your skewer again. Horns fall directly behind the eyes. So mid-eye to mid-eye is where you want to go through. There's not a lot of fiber here, so it's pretty easy to go through. And you're probably thinking, man, that is a lot of wire. It really isn't. So here's where you decide how big you want your horns. Do you want them to curve all the way around? This, this amount gives you the option of what you want to do. So we're going to use this fog color. And you're going to take a small amount, probably six inches, very thin. And then I want you to attach it to the head. I think that I'm going to go out about that far and then about that far. You guys want a measurement? <laughs> I'm going to go out about two inches. And then I'm going to come back. Keep that roving flat as you wrap. Oops. So I know I'm going to turn, I know that that's where I want the end of the horn. So I'm going to turn that in and squeeze it. Anything bigger than 18 gauge is going to be hard for you to squeeze. And then I'm going to wrap back down. And we'll add a little bit more to this in a minute. Okay, let's do the next one. So see, this would be just the right amount for a horn. Let's do the other one. And whatever you do, remember where, you know, you want them to be the same. Although sometimes goats knock their horns off. They get stuck in the fence. Not a lot of people know this, but we had cashmere goats. I had dreams of working with cashmere. Oh my goodness. Boy, is that labor intensive. And those billy goats smelled bad. Uh, but it was really intensive for the amount of fiber you would actually recoup from the animal. So I switched to sheep. Way more gratifying in harvesting. Now I have a little teeny piece of wire up there that's showing, but the power wax will take care of that. So when you get down by the head, so the, the horns are much wider at the base. So interesting known fact in people who breed goats is they don't want these horns, when you're looking at a breeding animal, they don't want them touching. But in felt, we could be a little bit more forgiving, right? And have them touching. They want a space between those horns. I'm still thinking this eyebrow is a little bit dark. So I might add just a little tiny bit of this brown of the body color over top of it. Some more shading in here.
I got fuzzies everywhere. Now I'm going to leave these horns sticking straight up like this for a minute. Because I'm going to power wax them. But I don't want them in my way right now. So now let's just run. Let's leave this little head alone. It'll look fine in a minute. still think he's too fat through here. I may have to put a little white dot in his eye or change his eyebrows. I gotta decide. Okay, so let's do some legs. Now, one fun part about, I like how they're fatter at the bottom here, wider, and skinnier here. <clears throat> so, little hoofies. You can use wax on the ends. I'm going to do these just like I did the horns. Oh, my, my black came apart. It's going to get thin. I am going to bend over just a tiny bit. If you have pliers, you probably want to use them. And then, remember, wrap the way you were wrapping. This is his little hoof. I'm just going to wrap it nice and tight. And then we will go up the leg, or down and up. So we could come over here, we'll put some of this on. I draft it out. I'm going to get that other leg out of the way so that I have free rein to wrap this one. I go down to just a little black is poking out. Go back up. And I'm going to poke this in. So see how I got a little skinnier spot right there? Just work this extra up into the into the body. Whatever you have left. Helps build your shoulder. His leg is looking a little short. Because I made his chest too big. So you may end up with a short-legged goat or be okay he'll be okay you know you never know how things are gonna come out I only did one practice run on this hey Cannon can you hand me a pair of pliers it'd be easier with to turn this because I'm doing it's 16 gauge and you want to squeeze it Make sure your legs are the same. Let's go back. I'm going to pull some off because I have too much. I'll probably just bury it up the leg. Poke it in. Just secure it. You don't want that foot to come undone. And let's secure that. Oh, 
always wrap in the same direction. That way you don't end up with any loose stuff. Because if you wrap one way and then go the other way, you're going to end up with a mess. See, this leg is a little fatter than the other one. Remember, it's not a race. Take your time. Now I'm gonna put I'm gonna put brown here, but I'm also going to add some white, like I have here. Could you hand me the power wax, please, Cannon? I'm gonna power wax the horns and get them out of the way. No, the, the big white container. Okay, let's power wax these horns. By now you've all heard me talk about this cold wax and it's pretty awesome. So these horns look super fat right now and fuzzy. And you're just gonna, remember, twist the same way you wrapped. Let me take my needle out of there so I don't break it. Remember, when you use this stuff, it's going to lighten up the color that you used just a bit. If you want to combat that, you can um, hit it with a hair dryer, and because it's wax, it will melt into the wool then. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. You see how that tightened up, tighten that horn right up. Let's get this one done. And then we can go back to finishing the face. I have a little bit of extra up here. Power wax is fun. I'm kind of an addict. So the base of this horn is skinnier than the other one. So I'm going to wrap just a little bit more fiber around the base of this horn. Let's get that in there. Got a whole bunch of fiber stuff going on there. I'm going to have to fix that up. Now, we're going to be able to add our ears. I am not sure about these eyebrows yet. I don't think I like them. I'm going to do something else. So let's put this away for a minute. Okay, got that nice little horn going on. Let's play with his eyeballs for a minute. I am going to... Do I like this color better? Oh yeah. Let's change it up. Remember, in felting, you can always change it up by adding a different color. <laughs> oh yeah, much better, much better. I like that better. That's the other side. And what I'm doing is just folding a little piece and laying it over the top of the one I already put on there. Little, by, I mean really little, remember. When you're doing details, you just need a tiny, tiny amount. 
So this excess will disappear when we put the ears on. We're going to do that next. So goats have really long ears and they hang down unless you're doing the kind of goat that doesn't have any ears at all. Like my friend um, Beverly has two goats that have no ears. I can't remember what kind they are. Technical technicalities. All right, ears. You're going to take your body color. I'm going to make two little stacks. Two little stacks. You don't want them too thick, but you don't want them too thin. And I'm going to take some of this weird dark color I was using and put it down here at the bottom. Because that's going to be the ends of my ears. And now I'm going to draw my ear pretty skinny. This is not a giant goat. Because I know where my ear is going to be. And I'm going to Fold it in. It's okay if that black disappears. It's just a contrast color going into the ear. The more we felt the ends of the ear, the more that black will come through. So we have these two little ears. Remember, don't felt them to your pad. You're going to have to keep turning them. They will keep shrinking as you go. That black's just giving us a little accent here. If you want, you could power wax your ears too because your ears are pretty thin. Or you can just felt them a whole bunch. You know, before Power Wax, there was just felting. I will hit them with a single needle here in a second. Once I feel like I've got them felted. Notice I'm leaving fringy at the top because we're going to work that in. So now I'm going to go back with the single needle. Catch all these wayward fibers. You can see mine are really starting to solidify. working them side by side you know they're about the same size and then we're going to take them and attach them they go right behind the eye and you're going to work that extra fiber around the base of the horn and a little bit forward Let's attach the other one. They're going to hang down below the jaw of the goat. I'm splitting up my little fringe to go around the base of the horn. Don't be afraid to move your horns around right now. Let's take a little tiny piece back here. Cover up the back of the neck and it builds out the back of his head at the same time. Ken, I think I made a pygmy goat. That's why he's got such short legs. <laughs> like my willow. My 
My Willow is a miniature blue face. She's so small. Let's take just a hair piece of white. It's lighter than this other color I have in here, and we're just going to add it in. So you can see how this body color went up the horns just a little bit because that's how their horns grow out. Okay, so then you're going to finish your goat. So I want you to just go along. I want you to do the two back feet. I'm going to add a little piece on here so it matches this one. And then I'm going to come back and show you how to put the tail on. Let's get them all felted in. All right, I've been working on this for about half an hour, maybe a little longer. I don't know. All right, so what, if you look at the way my goat stands, he's a little higher in the rear. So what I'm going to do is just make a little bend, give him a little hock there so that he stands up straight. Just adjust your legs. And I always like to give them knees in the front, a little knock knees. And you can see that I wrap that foot down more and I've been I, I gave him a spot um let's add some fluff in his chest area so I've got a little piece of um snow white here and I'm just going to whoops poke it in so it goes down in here I want this to come up under his chin just a little bit. Skinny at the neck. It's okay if you have a little fringe that goes out because that'll blend into that body color. They're not hairy, so well they're they're hairy, but they're not like fluffy so you want to just get it all poked in and then something I don't have on this goat that everybody was commenting on is a little chin so let's just take a little piece of the body color and we're gonna just poke it in right below his chin you know they always have these little hairy chins that's how Ellie leads her goats around <laughs> by the hairs on their chinny chin chin And we're probably going to have to trim it a little bit. Maybe not. I just got a little. So right around here, let's work that a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yes. No, Cannon. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I like that. Okay, so now we need to make a tail. So we've got this. Mine's a little pygmy goat, so my body was a little bit too deep compared to the my original. So he's got shorter legs. So let's give him a little tail. It's almost like making the ears. You know, we're going to trace a little, add a little triangle. Let's add some of this dark color. Fold it in. It's almost exactly like making the ears. Just making a little triangle tail. Remember to keep flipping it so it doesn't become one with your pad. TV is on in my other studio. It's got some obnoxious commercial on right now. So once you get the tail to the firmness that you like, goats often walk with their tails up. So I like it about right there. I'm going to make a little... Mm 
and then I'm going to attach it up his back. You can go either way. Actually, let's go this way. That way it'll stand up. We want to work this to either side of his hind end. Now, I know I didn't concentrate a lot on showing you how to do the back legs, wrapping them, but it's just like some of the other ones we've done. So I didn't want to waste your time, your watching time. So I'm, I'm making his little tail stand up. I can see a little bit. So wait, let's cover this spot of core. Sometimes I feel like I can never get my core all the way covered. It drives me a little bit nuts. Let's give him a little white spot right here, just for fun. That way he's got one on this side too. And then like sheep, you know, goats always have dirty knees. So you can always give them the little black spots on their knees right here if you want. Again, look at look at pictures. Um, I tend to get them right out of my brain. Now their horns go back and around. Go back and around. They don't stick up too much right here. And you know, if this is not a breeding goat. His horns would be way too close together. But he's a whimsical goat, so he's just right. You can always go in and add the little white spot in the eye if you want. Let's see. I want to make my eyelids look the same. A little bit high. And there you have it, it's a little goatee. Can't wait to see what you guys make. Post them on the Lion Gate Farm um, Facebook, Facebook group, it's Southern Oregon Fiber and Felting group. Go look for that. Um, you know, ask any questions that you have. If you need supplies, head over to the farm store at liongate.org. And then remember, I need you to click like if you like this video, hopefully you do, and um, follow us because it really helps us out. The more you guys follow us, and can't wait to see what you guys are doing. You know, it doesn't have to be my videos. You post, post whatever you want. So we'll come back next week. I think we're gonna do the hippo in the tutu next week, and I'll teach you how to do the tutu. So this one's got a little beard. Here we go, our two little goaties. Oh, they came out pretty similar. Oh, I see what's different. Okay, hold on. One more thing, one more thing. Let's take a little bit of the body color and put it right here in the nose. You know, you always can give them pink cheeks too. All right, now they're the same. Now they're the same. There you go. Except this, one, this must be the girl because it doesn't have a beard. Okay, see you next week.